Welcome to your syllabus tour. I'm going to try to move really quickly. If you need to pause to read something in detail, you may do that and restart the video. So welcome to Math 150 in the spring 2018 semester. First thing we have is the course description. This course is the study of mathematics applications in the health sciences using arithmetic, algebra, and statistics. Problem solving techniques will be illustrated to give students insight into the practical applications of mathematics in addressing real life problems. Really important things to show you here. This course is the study of applications, is the study of applications, is the study of real life problems. So lots and lots of word problems. We're going to try to keep those word problems focused on the health sciences so that feels very relevant for you. The math that underlies them is arithmetic and that's what we're studying this first week with order of operations and dimensional analysis. It is algebra where we involve variables in that and it is statistics. We'll focus on the normal distribution which is the distribution that underlines health care. Prerequisites for this course is that you've had high school algebra or the college level equivalent. So as we look at algebra topics, we will be reviewing them for those of you who have been out of school for a while, but we will not be teaching them as if it's the first time you've seen them. There are office hours every single week. This is time when I am in my office, which is Office 1063 in the back of Learning Commons. You do not need an appointment. You may just stop in to get help with whatever you need help with, to work out details if you need to make up something, all of those things. There is tutoring every single day of the week. Tutoring is located in room 1050, which is also in the Learning Commons. The times are listed here. Again, you do not need an appointment. You just stop in to get the help that you need. I recommend that you bring a laptop or whatever device you have with you so that you can complete your online homework during that time. The tutors all teach this course, so they are familiar with the content that you're working on and should be able to help you with the problems that you run into. Course outcomes. At the end of the semester you are going to take a survey that will ask you if I went over them so I do have to read these to you. The first three outcomes deal with the arithmetic and algebra. So today we'll work with simplifying algebraic and numerical expressions. Then We'll move on throughout the course to solving linear equations, exponential equations, and practical applications. That'll take us quite a few weeks and that'll be interspersed with other content. Finally, we'll work at modeling real life context using algebraic functions. And that is that whole applications piece, being able to take the words and come up with an equation for them. Our next three outcomes all deal with the statistics. So the first one is to be able to work with data and translate it among graph, table, and list formats. Secondly, we'll be able to calculate measures of central tendency and variation for sets of data. So that's things like mean, median, and mode, and range and standard deviation. Finally, we'll utilize descriptive statistics and the normal distributions to draw conclusions. The normal distribution is the one that helps us determine if the symptoms that we're seeing are normal or if they need treatment. So that one's very important in the health sciences. Our final three outcomes deal with dosage calculations, which will be very important to nursing and surgical tech students. So we'll be able to perform calculations requiring conversions within and between the metric and household systems. That means we'll also have to memorize the metric and household systems. We'll learn to calculate oral, parenteral, and IV medication. We'll work with adult and pediatric doses that are based on weight or body surface area. In order to do all that, we actually have two textbooks that we're using. So let me pull in that information. This information is in the Getting Started tab in your Blackboard site. You need to get a calculator. This is the recommended calculator, and I'll mention keystrokes for that calculator all throughout the semester. The key thing is for your quiz next week that you have a scientific calculator. This course is not approved to use a graphing calculator, and you may not use a cell phone or other device. The reason why is because you will be asked to memorize things throughout this course, so it is important that you have a calculator that cannot be programmed with that information. 
the one book that you need to purchase is the workbook and you'll want to get a physical copy or you can rent or get an e-text for the workbook the other book that we'll be using you will get as an e-text which saves you approximately half the cost you will purchase access to my math lab it does cost a good bit I think it's a hundred and three dollars and ninety five cents with my math lab you'll get access to this book as an e-text so that you can read all of that without having to purchase it as a separate piece for this course so back to the syllabus there's textbooks here's calculator here's information on my math lab I put videos this week throughout your module one to help you with the various pieces of my math lab really important is that you register for that through the links that are in blackboard so that your course is linked and your grades carry over next section here is the grading section so you see that we have four exams plus a cumulative final exam that is purposeful so that the exams are small and not overwhelming but that also means they come pretty frequently in a 15 week course the weeks that we don't have exams we will have a quiz so you will have an assessment every week moving forward each week you will have a my math lab assignment and each week you will have a fill-in-the-blank pre-lecture notes that correspond to your reading assignment every quiz will cover the material covered in the previous class and the concept on the pre-lecture video so make sure you watch your video and take notes on that so that you're ready for the quiz we use the college grading scale and I do round final grades to a whole percent so for those of you in nursing you need to earn a 74 a C and so in this course you truly need to earn a 73.5 or higher so that that rounds up each my math lab assignment is only available during the week that it is assigned and must be completed by midnight prior to the next class that means on Wednesday morning when I wake up I can look at your work and we can then talk about in class those that gave you difficulty so I'll show you next week in class how you can go back to those for study purposes I do have to have a statement about APA but we have no written papers so you really don't have to worry about that attendance is going to be taken and you'll sign in every week to take care of that if I am absent or class is canceled like we're experiencing right now it will be communicated to you in email and through blackboard announcement and you'll get an email and announcement indicating the alternative things that you need to do to make up that missed class academic dishonesty and plagiarism most important piece here is this last paragraph students may collaborate on homework assignments that's those my math lab assignments you may get help from a friend peer or tutor on your homework assignment test and quizzes will be taken individually in class they're going to be proctored you're expected to complete them on your own without any authorized assistance of any kind another key thing is to talk about missed material I've set this up so that you can miss one class without any real penalties if it is your first missed class you must get me your pre lecture notes prior to the start of the next class that can be done in person right before the next class starts or you can take a picture and email them to me that miss quiz will be dropped from your score it will not count for or against you if you miss a test that week you may make it up and you must do so prior to the start of the next class because I'll give them back at the next class at that point there's no makeups if you miss another class your pre lecture notes must be turned in prior to their due date and you can do that by taking a picture and emailing it to me before the start of class quizzes may not be made up so you will receive a zero on those subsequent missed classes a missed test can be made up but you will lose 10 percent and that is to level the playing field because you had more study time and more people who knew exactly what to study so you have an advantage over your classmates of course if there are extenuating circumstances you may make up the work so if you get into an accident on your way here get a police report and that will excuse your missed class and will let you make up all the work with no penalty same thing with hospitalization serious illness or giving birth or the death of a family member we just need documentation to allow you to make up that work really important here and that is why it is in bold if you cannot attend a class 
everything pre-lecture notes quizzes tasks can be completed early without a grade penalty so if you have a child's doctor's appointment if you have a wedding out of town whatever it is you can be responsible schedule those things beforehand and then you don't lose any points also at the end of the semester a student who has not missed any classes will get to drop his or her lowest quiz as a reward for coming to class and taking all of those quizzes class behavior pretty straightforward you need to behave in such a way that the people who are here can learn and so we'll ask that you're not using all of your devices to text email etc and if there is inappropriate behavior first off I'll talk to you but if it continues I'll ask you to leave so that your behavior is not negatively impacting your peers special accommodations is from the American with Disabilities Act and you do need the documentation for that you can work with the student employee health office if you need to get that documentation if you already have your documentation just get it to me and then I can provide you those accommodations for you finally if there are going to be revisions I will make sure that you get an email about them and that they're posted on blackboard so that we all know exactly what's going on in this class now I went over that crazy fast but if you find that you have questions or need more clarification hopefully we'll be together next week and you can ask me in person and I can explain things just a little bit better